All right, they're moving on. So let me ask you. Do you think last year was a success for Aaron Rodgers? I don't. <laughs> Couldn't win a home playoff game. One and done. Embarrassing. Yet he was MVP. That goes to me. That goes to my argument. The last part of the movie makes the movie. You can never have a great movie with a bad ending. There's never been ever a great movie with a lousy last 15 minutes. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't happen. There's not one. Aaron Rodgers won the MVP last year is not a success. Couldn't win a playoff game. Couldn't score a touchdown. Let's go to Jimmy Garoppolo. Cause I think a lot of you think replacing Jimmy Garoppolo is not that hard from week 10 on last year. Second in the NFL in completion percentage, 71%. Second in yards per attempt, fourth in passer rating. That's the Jimmy Garoppolo he's replacing. Nobody cares about week four. That's why the Niner coaches are nervous. Jimmy's a gamer and an alpha, and he's confident. That's who you're replacing. Nobody gives a rip about the injuries, and nobody cares about Aaron Rodgers' October. Aaron Rodgers' season was embarrassing at the end. Again. Trey Lance is not there yet. And, and Jimmy Garoppolo, by the way, may never, ever be close to this good again without Kyle Shanahan. You're probably right. Doesn't matter. The last 15 minutes of the movie, if it's great, you walk out of that theater and your memory of it is that is a good movie. And there has never, ever been a great movie ever made with a lousy last 15 minutes. Jimmy Garoppolo's last three years, two NFC championship games, blew out Aaron Rodgers in one, and led Matt Stafford in another in the fourth quarter. The team that has beaten him the last two years that he has gotten to at least the NFC Championship was the Super Bowl champion. That's who knocked him out. It was the Rams this year, and it was the Chiefs that year, and he led both in the fourth quarter. And this roster is full of guys who played in those games and loved Jimmy Garoppolo. So this idea it's just going to be easy. Trey Lance could be bigger, stronger, more athletic. I don't doubt any of it. But how it ends is how it is, okay? And if you look at the Niners' schedule, when Trey Lance is on the field, on the other side of the field in the first 10 games, he's going to be facing Russell Wilson, Matt Stafford, Patrick Mahomes, Matt Stafford, Justin Herbert, and Kyler Murray. And that's what you're going to compare him to. And that's what his teammates are going to compare him to. So, you know, this idea that, oh, Niner fans were like, it's great, all I hear is shade for Jimmy Garoppolo. Last 10 games, and that's when legends are made. That's why Rodgers will never be Brady. He doesn't end his seasons well. Ooh, he's great in September. That was Brady's worst month. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Tom's worst month in New England, September. Tom was great in January. Can't be a great movie with a lousy ending. Jimmy, week 10 on, was really good and won big games. And Trey Lance has his work cut out for him. I think he'll be good. I think he'll be talented. But this idea, this is just Kyle's great. Jimmy G, get him out of here. Tougher than you think. Earlier this week, Mike Sando of The Athletic dropped his annual quarterback tiers. There's like four or five tiers. And he asked executives and coaches, 50 people around the league, for their opinion. That he, he takes all those anonymous uh, grades and he has tiers. Um, it's interesting. The GM for the Minnesota Vikings, uh, Quase Adolfo Mensa, said yesterday regarding Kirk Cousins, I'll be frank, the one asset where you get nervous about not burning it down is quarterback. We don't have Tom Brady. We don't have Patrick Mahomes. Super Bowl's more likely if you have one. It's very unlikely to have that quarterback. So everybody kind of freaks out. Whoa! What is this egg? Very critical. The Vikings are in the second best place you can be in the NFL with a quarterback. Because my quarterback tiers is more simplified. There's three of them. The first tier is a quarterback that can win a Super Bowl. That means you may have to win on the road. You're going to have to beat other great quarterbacks. Uh, you're going to have to win multiple games. Can you win in bad weather? Can you beat Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau? Quarterbacks that can win Super Bowls. The second tier is quarterbacks that can win a division and a playoff game. Andy Dalton won a division. Mitch Trubisky won a division. Kirk Cousins won a division. They have one playoff win, and it was called a miracle. So they're not going to win. They're not, they're not, they're good, 
but they're not good enough to win three straight playoff games or four straight. They're not Matt Stafford. They're not Brady. They're not Manning. They're not Russell Wilson, where they can win on the road, at home, good weather, have to carry a team. The defense stinks that day. They can win shootout. But they can win a division. Mitch Trubisky won a division. Andy Dalton won a division. And they may, they're not going to win multiple playoff games. They can win a playoff game. They need things to go their way. Stephon Diggs makes the best, biggest play of the year in the NFL. Vikings win. And then there's the third tier. Get on the phone. You don't got that guy. Get on the phone. Um, and so I think Kirk Cousins is in tier two. Mike Sando had him rated 15th. That's about where I have him. I probably have him 14th, I think, last time I did it. So, and I don't, so I only think there's eight guys in the world in tier one and probably eight in tier two and then 16 in tier three. To me, these are the guys that can win a Super Bowl. Allen, Brady, Burrow, Herbert, Mahomes, Rogers, Matthew Stafford, Russell Wilson. I think Derek Carr and Kyler Murray are darn close. Lamar Jackson may be too. I'm not sure. I think Kyler, I think Dak and Lamar can win maybe a playoff game or two. I think Derek Carr's darn close. I like Derek way more than the market, and I think Kyler's really special. If Kyler's healthy at the end of the year running around making plays with that roster he's got, they can win multiple playoff games. I don't have him yet winning four. Just not quite. I don't think he's quite, quite special enough from the pocket. But, I mean, that's so my whole point on Kirk Cousins is it's not a terrible place to be. There's only eight teams in the first tier. And some of those guys in the first tier, Justin Herbert, haven't even made the playoffs yet. Most of them don't have Super Bowls. So I, you know, I I think it's, I don't think it's a shot at all at Kirk Cousins. I think we know exactly what he is. And he's a very capable tier two guy. And they deserve to be paid a lot of money. I think tier two quarterbacks are, they make billionaires rich. They sell merchandise. They fill a stadium. They're excellent. I even think there's guys like uh, uh, Mitch Trubisky as a bridge quarterback who's incredibly valuable this year to the Steelers. For his mentorship of Kenny Pickett, he's a really good guy. Uh, that defense is good enough. That division, you could win some games in that division. I think you could. I think, I honestly, I don't think they will. But, I, you know, are we all going to be shocked if Tomlin, that defense, those receivers and playmakers won that division? I wouldn't be shocked by it. I don't think they're going to go on the road and beat Mahomes. They're not going to beat Josh Allen. They probably wouldn't beat Lamar. They may not even beat Tannehill. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.